Jamie Howe sat down with the four-time NHRA champion Greg Anderson, who has had his share of wild rides behind the wheel of a pro stock car. But a doctor's checkup three years ago set the stage for what would be the scariest ride of his life. Well, I didn't think it was a big deal at first. I just went in for the old annual checkup to get my NHRA driver's license renewed. And uh, the doctor come in and he says, you have a valve problem. You have an aortic valve problem. They call it a bicuspid aortic valve. I said, well, okay, well, what does that mean? He says, well, he says, it's probably something that you were born with, you know, 50 years ago. But bottom line is, we got to open you up. We got to do open heart surgery. We got to replace that valve. And uh, after half an hour or so of me explaining what I did, how I was a a drag racer and, and, and nothing was more important in life than making it to every drag race they had. I talked them out of operating on me at the time and we decided to keep an eye on her, take a picture of it every six months and keep an eye on it. When it got to a certain point, they would tell me when they were scared enough that it had to be changed out. Earlier this year, you had one of those six months checkups. What did the doctor find that time around? Basically, to make a long story short, I bought about three years of time of uh, taking pictures of it and, and continuing my race program. and. This, uh, this February, when I went in and checked and took a picture, he said, it's time. You had the procedure done while your team was at Pomona. Talk me through the procedure and what they actually did. Well, they had to actually replace my aortic valve, and right behind the aortic valve is a big artery that's about an inch in diameter, and it had an aneurysm out to about two inch in diameter, so it was ready to burst. So it's probably a piece about two, three inches long, so they replaced that valve and that main artery. We thought it was serious right away, a lot more serious than he thought it was. <laughs> you know, he thought, I don't know, he made it seem like he was going in for a root canal and the rest of us were all, you know, we were certainly more concerned, I think, than he was. And it turns out we were a little more right than he was. If you hadn't done the surgery, what did the doctor say that the consequences would be? Well, they weren't real good. He said, uh, the problem you have, you have an aneurysm in the main artery behind your aortic valve and that's what we're worried about. If that bursts, you're done. He says, you're not going to rush to the hospital. We're not going to have 15 minutes to save you. You're dead. You're instantly dead. If that bursts, then obviously with what you do driving a race car, your heart's going to accelerate during a run down the racetrack. And that's when we fear, you know, the aneurysm bursting. So uh, he said, we made the right decision. You would not have made it through that first race. There's 15 of us in the waiting room waiting. And the doctor actually comes out. He's dripping wet. I mean, he is sweating. He has worked his butt off for like seven hours. He comes out and he goes, you know, he goes, that was tougher than what I thought. Greg is a walking time bomb. He is a lucky man to be here. That was one of the hardest surgeries I have ever done. I told everybody it'd be a piece of cake, but it ended up being quite an ordeal for us. So for a couple of days I was out of it and I can remember every word they were saying to me as I was groggy and in and out of consciousness and, and, and them talking to to the family and everybody telling them they thought I'd had a stroke and I'd never be the same again, I'd never drive a race car again. Bottom line was I just lost too much blood during the operation, so a little complication, but they scared everybody. They scared the family, they scared my guys out in Pomona racing, and uh, when I was able to finally pick up the phone and make a call out to the guys in California, it was like a, an elevator got lifted off their back. Once I spoke to him, uh, you know, I felt a sense of relief because um, you know, I've been pretty fortunate and haven't lost a lot of uh, a lot of folks in my life have been, that have been, you know, super close to me. And, and Craig, go, you know, obviously, I spend more time with him in the last 10 years than I have anybody else, uh, even my wife. It was a huge relief. So, and I think, uh, honestly, I, I really feel like that helped us win that weekend. Jason Lyme seals wow. the deal. 652-6 for Ken Black. And of course, his old buddy, Greg Anderson, out in North Carolina. That Pomona win by his teammate inspired Anderson to get back into the driver's seat. But the road back to racing proved difficult for both Greg and his wife, Kim. What role did your wife, Kim, play in your rehabilitation and getting you back out to the track? Well, she went through uh, a tough period. It was definitely harder on her than me because uh, for that first month, you're, you struggle. I mean, you're in a lot of pain and you can't do anything right. You can't sleep in the bed. You can't lay down. You just, uh, you're never comfortable. Seeing him like he was, was very scary. And you know what, he's a fighter. And I knew he was a fighter. And I knew he wouldn't stop. There was some weak moments that I just wanted to get in my closet and just cry, and, and I did. But you know what, I had to be the strong one. Right from the get-go, when I first sat down to talk to the doctor, he told me it was gonna be three months. It just so happened to be three months exactly, would be exactly six races. It would be after the Houston race. And I said, well, you know what, 
if I can find a way through all this to get back one week before that and save one race, that could make the, the difference at the end of the year, you know, towards getting in a championship or a chase or not. After missing the first five events of the season, Greg Anderson is back, but the road to the countdown to the championship is going to be a long one. Making it into the top 10 for the countdown could come right down to the U.S. Nationals. With all the success that you've had there, does that put more pressure on you or is it an advantage? Indy's magical to me and if it comes down to Indy, I'll have a very confident feeling coming in and then that's not saying that it's, it's going to happen. Nobody's going to hand me that 10th place. I'm going to have to earn it. But uh, I've said it a million times before, if I can't win before the countdown, I don't deserve to be in it anyway and I absolutely feel all the confidence in the world, I'm going to win before the countdown. Get into that countdown and I'm going to win during that countdown. That man has heart, that man has drive. And that man is trying to hold on to an opportunity to continue to extend a top 10 record that goes 12 consecutive years.